Good morning, Harlem, and hello, Evans and Augusta and Columbia County, <laughs> CSRA and Georgia and the world on YouTube. So welcome, welcome. My name is Alex Cooper. If you haven't been in one of my classes before, let me introduce myself. 
I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library, the Evan, the, the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, the Uchi Creek, now Grovetown Library. And today's class is we're going to just kind of have some fun putting together some Raspberry Pi projects. So I think our big project today is going to be a GPIO pin uh, music playing a little bit. We're starting a little late, so sorry about that. But the interesting thing is we actually started this class before in a previous um, session on YouTube here. But we had some technical issues and even trying to get our Raspberry Pi on our screen so we could code for it. So the first half of that is kind of putting the stuff together, which I'm going to cover that so we can kind of get a refresher and we'll all be on the same page and everything. And then we'll talk about some of our other stuff that we have going on and we'll work on getting our project together. Okay, you know another way to do something uh, then hopefully it'll work better because <laughs> you never know. All right, so before we start classes and everything, do you realize we've kind of switched over to our YouTube here. You do need to be logged into YouTube to be able to post something. So make sure you're logged in so you can subscribe to our channel and also uh, like, like and watch our other videos as well. Okay, so I always start off with a nice little friendly. How can I help? Okay, what questions do you have? Uh, I know you may be watching this uh, already pre recording and everything, but do you realize if you come to one of our live classes, of course, you can ask me questions and stuff. Now, our libraries are closed because we're at home staying safe and everything. I mean, excuse me, our libraries are uh, closed to in house programs. Let me get more specific. Uh, so, uh, we all are at home staying safe doing our online programs for our, our patrons. Uh, to come and enjoy. So definitely make sure to share and like our videos. So today, well, yesterday we actually did Word uh, 2019. That video should still be up and available. And today, of course, we're doing our Raspberry Pi projects. And this afternoon we're going to be doing Excel 2019 Basics at 2.30. Now, I actually have recently discovered a new option on there, so I'll be talking about something new that I've come down, uh, learned about doing, excuse me, drop down menus. So if you're putting in a lot of data and it's the same data over and over again, <laughs> do you realize that you can actually set up a drop down menu to allow you to make choices? I'm telling you, I was, I worked on a, a project and the, the thing was that I typed the same thing and I'd always kind of cringe a little bit going, well, I hope I get this right on here because I'm having to keep typing it over and over. I could do a copy paste but this drop down method works a lot better and I'll be talking about that uh, later this afternoon. And I'll disappear for a second and start talking about some of our other programs we have going on this month. Of course this is Office Week with Word, Excel, and then PowerPoint tomorrow afternoon. This morning we're doing our Raspberry Pi Computing Project Ideas. Um, excuse me, Raspberry Pi Raspberry Pi Computer Projects Live with me, and we'll also be doing one tomorrow morning as well. So if we don't finish up this project, we'll finish it up in that class. And then for the rest of the month, we've got stuff like Gadget Help, Cord Cutting on the 30th, which is a big popular, very popular class. We'll talk about Peacock and the other services like Pluto TV and stuff. We also have Chess coming up. And then at the end of the month, we're gonna be doing Photography Basics, um, which is a great class, fundamentals, cloud backup, and also we push this. So if you ever viewed the uh, previously recorded photo editing class, realize we've updated and made it new, and now that's going to include layers. And our virtual scrapbooking now is in its own class with printing and virtual scrapbooking. And also we'll have creating videos and editing basics at the end of the month. Okay. Do you realize our libraries are open with limited services and hours? Curbside hold pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details. Make sure to thank the librarians for doing that. It's an excellent service and they're doing a great job. Uh, call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates. And right now we actually need 100 subscribers. 
so that we can actually get our own official YouTube channel name, okay? Right now it's a big long, uh, has, has a bunch of letters and numbers and stuff like that in an address. So if you are searching for our YouTube channel, just go to YouTube, search for GCHRL videos, it'll pull right up. But if you do hit subscribe, not only will you be updated with our posts and everything, but also you'll help us get to our goal of trying to get our own our own address okay all right so let's go ahead go back to our whoop didn't mean to click that sorry <laughs> go back to our projects here and let's talk about what we're gonna cover okay so one of the things we kind of do is we usually have an on-ground class where we actually everybody has their own little Raspberry Pi and everything Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi. <gasps> Can I eat it? No, it's not that kind of Raspberry Pi. It's a Raspberry Pi that we do projects on, we can code with, and I have a little goodie box of all kinds of stuff that we got in a previous class. Purchased that because we just needed some certain components, but I got a whole bunch of new components. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do little projects with that. On and off, try new things, and uh, try projects together. And we might have it in a, in a class in the future okay so this is me just kind of tinkering with it uh, learning about it uh, playing with it and glad that you're here uh, with me as well so let's start from the beginning here so we actually have a main class that we do which is introduction to Raspberry Pi and projects so let me pull that up which is actually called physical computing. So I will share this in the Okay, so I'm going to share the original handout in the chat. You can download we do LED stuff and programming, so we're going to go beyond that a little bit and work on our GPIO music box today. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull that up. So, like I said, today we're going to do our GPIO pin uh, music box. We're going to get our chords and everything together first, and then we'll actually start doing our coding. I actually have a new way that we can connect with our um, project. So let me show you that. So, yay! Okay. So, I'm going to move that down to the bottom right so we can see. And look, you can see my hand. Hey, hey brother, how's it going? Look, I can do a bird. Okay. So, now that we have this, we can talk about our, our components and everything. And give me one second. I can see that it's trying to. It will try to autofocus all the time, so I will turn off autofocus because I know it's in focus now. Okay, good. So that wouldn't shouldn't be a problem anymore. Okay, so we can actually have two things going on here. Of course, I will close this when it looks like it's covering up our project. So let's go ahead and let's get to kind of our introduction here. All right, so it's a music box. It says music box, but I really think more of it's like a sound machine. Okay. Um, and um, and so one of the things we can do is we can actually make the sounds anything now we're going to kind of follow along and do her um, example so let me show you a little bit of video that we have here now she starts really delving into it um, so we'll actually kind of not cover that part to begin with so I'll go ahead and play it now Today, you're going to wire buttons to your Raspberry Pi and use Python to make a sound machine. <laughs> to make this project, you will need a Raspberry Pi, a breadboard, some buttons, and some male-to-male -male and male-to-female jumper cables. A Raspberry Pi has 26 GPIO pins. 
GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. These pins allow you to send and receive on-off signals to and from electronic components like LEDs, motors and buttons. Each pin has a number and there are additional pins that provide 3.3 volts, 5 volts and ground connections. A pin diagram or labeler like this one helps you to know which pin is which. Buttons give you control over a circuit and let you send signals to a computer, like the keys on your keyboard. Before wiring your circuit, switch off your Raspberry Pi. Place one of your buttons onto your breadboard like this. Make sure you push the legs as far down into the holes as you can. Next, connect a ground pin on the Raspberry Pi to the negative rail on the breadboard using a male to female jumper wire. Then, connect the negative rail to the button with a male to male jumper wire. Now, connect the other leg of your button to GPIO pin 17 using another male to female jumper wire. You've now created an electrical circuit. It has power and a pathway to conduct the electric current. In your circuit, the current flows from the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pin through the circuit to the ground pin. Your button acts as a switch that can break the circuit. When the switch is open, no current can flow. When the switch is closed, the current flows from negative to positive through the completed circuit. Which way does the current flow in your circuit? Early scientists believed that current flowed from positive to negative. They called this conventional current. We now know that current actually flows in the opposite direction, from negative to positive. But we still use the term conventional current, which can be confusing when you're new to electronics. What we can agree on is that electronics is all about controlling electric current to make it do something useful. That's the hardware complete. Now for the software. We're going to use a Python programming environment, or IDE. Create a new project by clicking New. Set up your button by typing from GPIO0 import button. Then create a variable, btn equals button, open parentheses, 17, close parentheses. Next, define a function that will print the word hello. Def hello open parentheses, close parentheses, colon. Print, open parentheses, quote, hello, quote, close parentheses. And finally, create a trigger that calls the function. btn dot when underscore pressed equals hello. And save it as music box. When you run your program, the message hello should appear each time the button is pressed. Now let's add some sound. Create a directory called music box in your home directory and save the sound files you want to use in here. They need okay, to be WAV so file type for them to work. Let's stop there. We learned a little bit more about our project and she's delving a little bit beyond what we want to cover right this minute. So let's watch this little video that shows a little bit about what we're trying to make. So calling it a music box, it's a little bit more like, you know, a drum machine maker. It could Any kind of sounds on there you get, you could actually make it a little piano if you wanted to. A lot of different choices, you know, that we have. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to learn. We're going to learn about playing sounds with Python. We're going to use Python GPIO0 library to connect buttons, press to function calls, use a dictionary data structure in Python. Let's talk about what we're going to need. Okay, so let me go ahead and pull my camera up. Hello, you can see my hand. All right, so let's talk about what we have. I'll move my chair a little closer over here. Well, first we got our Raspberry Pi. It has the ras Raspberry um, operating system on there. It used to be called Raspbian, okay? But it's not anymore. 
it is called the Raspberry um, Pi operating system. Okay, and they've got the link right there. Of course, you can see the website. The address of this project is projects at raspberrypi.org, and then it's en forward slash projects forward slash gp io dash music dash box okay but you can just type in google raspberry pi gpio um, music box and it'll pull right up so after you've actually installed that and it has full instructions on that onto your um, onto your SD card okay and it has a little software to be able to do that too then you're good to go and it, make sure that you choose the one that says it comes with all the recommended software so your everything's already pre-installed VLC the video player music player is already in there as well okay so let's talk about what we have one we have our Raspberry Pi hello I'm using version 3 right now you can use any of the version of the Pi for these projects even the new 4 as well which I did an unboxing uh, when I got my second one and then we actually have our breadboard here's our breadboard here now let's talk about our cords so I have cords that are male to male here's your male to male here's the male to female just so that it goes on our our GPIO pins there and we'll talk more about that in a second male the female so how many do we need we need four male to male and we need five male to female so one two oh duh they're over here you could probably see that and said Alex it's over there three See four, and then we have five male to female. Okay. Uh, a big misnomer is people will say, "Does it matter what color the wire is?" No, it does not matter. There is no ho cut the red cord or anything like that going on. So we also have our tactile. Basically, just means that it's a button that we can press, and then we also have our little teeth that stick out so they'll fit perfectly on our breadboard. And we actually have our little tops so we can change them, make the buttons any color that we want. Okay. So one, two, three, four of those. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I do know that they'll go ahead and start talking about getting the. Oh, she's talking, talking about. Oh, she starts talking about getting the, the music together, but we're going to skip that and go ahead and put our breadboard and stuff together first, okay? So it matches what she's doing, okay? And then we'll come back and we'll get all that set up, the software side. So she's talking about getting the music together, so we'll come back and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip to the next, so next part. Let's talk about connecting our buttons. Now, what is a GPIO? It means, repeat after me, general input and output. Okay, general input and output. All right, what does that mean? Well, it's general purpose, input, output. Did I just say just general? <laughs> general purpose, input, output, GPIO. What that means is, is these pins that are here on our, should be able to hold it up, and it should still be hmm, kind of in focus. There we go. So we can see that. There's our GPIO pins, and they also have different purposes too. Now, I do know if you use some of the other little computers, they may have it a little bit more set up, but these actually, the numbers are not really in order, so do realize that. But it's just the way they're set up the main thing to know and I'll go ahead and show you I will pull up this is the handout that I posted and it goes into GPIO pins 
and mostly what the GPIO pins do is one gives off three volts of power, 3.3, another will give off five volts of power, G and D is our ground to close our circuit, okay, and GP whatever means general purpose pin. So whatever we connect that to, whatever the code is, we need to make sure that that is a, that's a corresponding number, okay. Huh, interesting, I just realized something. My mouse disappears, I can see it, but you guys can't. My mouse disappears when I come into the, this section for some reason. Anyway, all right, so if you look down here, you can get a, um, uh, this little schematic is what it is. It sits on top of it. Don't have one of those, so we're actually gonna go um, and talk about exactly what I have. And the main thing is to take the, the Raspberry Pi and make the, the USB ports and have them point down, okay? So let's talk about our parts of our Raspberry Pi, okay? We have our four USB ports, and this is a three, but everything in four may look a little different, but I'll talk about that in a second. Use our Ethernet port to directly plug into the internet. If we turn it this way, we have our power we have our HDMI out, and we have our headphone jack, okay? If you're looking at the Razer Pi 4, it just has two mini HDMI plugs. You need to plug into the one on the left because that's the main one. The, the other one is just an extra if you want two screens or two monitors. Here's our SD card that goes in there. And I actually have on mine, if yours looks a little different, some, um, I'm blanking on what they call, but it's to cool the CPU and the GPU, okay? And they came with it, and they're just little stickers stick on there, help it keep it cool, okay? Uh, Ryzen Pi 4 does need a fan because it can overheat. It's not as much as with the Ryzen Pi 3. So let's talk about our input output. Now, like she said, most of the time we talk about it runs from positive to negative, We're, but there's researchers doing all kinds of stuff going on all the time, but we're going to play along and pretend that that's still the, the, the standard, even though they may be looking into other um, ideas, okay? So we have our positive, comes through, our LED only goes one way, goes through our LED, it goes to a resistor or fuse to try to make sure that it's not too much power for our LED there goes through we have our button that we can press like this closes the circuit and it goes back to negative the big thing to know about this is you have to have positive and negative has to be in there somewhere to connect back to close the circuit so that it's a complete circuit and it works okay now let's look at our breadboard this is one of the first projects I've ever actually done that does use the rails okay most of mine have been using just the row system. Okay, so let's look at our breadboard here and kind of compare it, and I'll kind of hold it at an angle a little bit. There you go. So if I plug in something, I got one of these wires. If I plug in something here, and then I plug in something else on the same row, they connect, okay? They'll connect together because that's the same row. I kind of call this the river in the middle. Now, if you actually do the rail system, and we can see that uh, looking through um, the cutout of the rail, that if we decide to play plus, put something in the plus here, or put something on the negative rail, it goes all the way down our breadboard so we can connect things very easily, and that's about what we're about to do, okay? So the rows are separate than the rails. All right, so let's go back to our website here. The big thing again is to kind of have a USB here. Now their example, the Raspberry Pi is kind of turned this way as you can see the hole on the top left. But like I said, I just try to have it so that the, the USB plugs are on the bottom, okay? Have a whole little section here talking about using buttons in general mainly with the button like it says this way up so it's a little bit easier to connect 
you basically connect one button one side of the button to the ground and the other side to a GP pin so that when we program it we'll be good and ready to go okay so we're gonna do something similar to that all right now we're actually going to be talking about the right using the rail system so with the rail system you actually only have to plug in the ground into one wire going back to the um, GPIO pins and we actually plug all our ground stuff into that hence why we need five plugs excuse me five male the female wires instead of five and five okay so the only need four on the other so that's what we're going to do okay so let's go ahead and we need to I think I did this the same thing last time so give me one second here we have to give me one second okay so So we basically have our way that we should program everything. So if we go back, talked about our pins, talked about wiring everything up. So we actually want to use this. So here's our four from our code, 17, 27, and 10. So that's the way we actually want to arrange our buttons, okay? So let's go ahead and let's get started. I'm going to move this for now. All right. So first, let's go ahead and put our buttons on there. And now what you want to do with the button is that make sure that you're not bending the teeth in any way. Okay. So I just kind of want it to go across the river. Kind of uniform so it looks a little bit better. I kind of press hard on there till it's completely flat on the board. I've had some students where it gets a little bent, so if it does get bent, um, maybe use a pair of tweezers to kind of unbend it. Excuse me. Sorry. All of a sudden we were on a boat. And I'm going to try to make it uniform here. I'll thread it around a little bit further than that. All right, so three holes difference. Isn't that a wonderful sound? All right, let's get our other buttons here. Now there's our four buttons and I got three spaces in between so they look kind of uniform all right now let's get our toppers on there and they don't have to be square I've had some that are round Now we have our buttons and the clicking. And now we got to get them to do something. You just kind of want to sit here and just click them all day. Click, 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 click. Kind of like that. Okay, so what we want to do. is this is for our male to female so the first thing we have going on is we want to set up our rail system 
So we're going to plug it, plug it right into the top there, the negative. We're not going to use the positive rail. This is so it goes back to the board, just like they have in our illustration up here. <laughs> I can point at it like that. How about that? Like our illustration up here. So we're going to plug everything, all the negatives, into the, the blue rail. I wonder why it's not black, because that would make more sense. But anyway. So let's go right through. First, we need our male to female, and we want to. And it actually does not matter which plug you do, but I'm actually going to follow along with our. Well, okay, so I'm going to follow along with our diagram here. So we'll do the negative first; it has to be on the same row, and then plug that just into the the negative. Okay. I will tell you this with electronics. You work on one small little project and you learn a lot because it's a big learning curve sometimes. All right, so plug in there and then this will plug into our board. And let's see. So we're gonna start over here with our GPIO pin four and our good thing is our little diagram here, if I can point to it. Our diagram actually loads up and tells us what they are now, if not, I'll go back to my handout that I, I posted, and it's got the whole diagram right there, okay? So, what is GPIO for is what I'm looking for, and that looks like one, two, three, four, four on the left. So, one, two, three, four, four on the left. Okay, and then that should make that button work. Now we need to put the ground one on there, don't we? So what is ground? Ground is three on the left. Okay, one, two, three. So it's satisfying button clicking. All right, so let's do our male to female to male next. Here's our button, male to male, and now all you gotta do is plug that right into the rail, okay? See? Now, let's get our male to female, and this is our second button. So we're gonna connect that to 17, and 17 is one, two, three, four, five, six, on the left. So one, two, three, four, Five, six on the left. All right, now let's do our next button here. All right. And let's click on here. This is 27, and 27 is the next one after 17. All right. And someone says, this is a lot of wires. And it's like, yep, it is a lot of wires. The big thing is you don't have to cram it down the breadboard too much. You mostly just have to touch the bottom, okay? I've had some students where they think they have to press so hard that it bends this. And you don't have to press that hard. All right, what's our last one? 10. Okay, 10 is way down there. All right, so what is 10? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, we could move it around to whatever we want, but right now I'm just following the example. Oh, is it number 10 on the board? Okay, good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Voila! There you go. All right, so. I'm actually.
actually going to take a picture real quick. So now that we've done our wiring together, hopefully we did it properly. Because first attempt is always fail. So just kind of remember that. And the second attempt fails too, and usually the third. But then hopefully you'll figure it out exactly what you need to do. Okay, so we're gonna now connect up. And I have my speaker wire and I got my cord here and we've actually have it set up so that if this works of course that I'll actually plug into this and then I'll connect to it wirelessly and then we'll see our display on our screen okay like I said I said hope didn't I I did say hope didn't I I did I did Okay, so give me one minute. Yay, okay, so here's our Raspberry Pi screen. We are actually connected wirelessly. I won't go into that too much, but if you do want more information on that, it's called BL, VN, L, VNC, if I can talk, it's called BNC. So our goal here is we're going to kind of be switching back and forth. I can actually control our Raspberry Pi as well. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to our programming. Yay, we got our Raspberry Pi on our screen, didn't we? Okay, so like I said, the, usually I'd plug it into here, the HDMI, and we get the, the display, but because I want it to be on the screen and to work properly, and we did have problems before about a video card capture, uh, I found out this was a lot easier, and so far it is a lot easier. Okay, so if something goes wrong, <laughs> We'll just have to reconnect it again, okay? All right, so let's go back to our handout here and let's go back to setting up our project and we'll kind of follow along. Now, I actually haven't used these samples before and I'm gonna go ahead and, whoop, it's not what I want, hang on. We're going to kind of follow along with what she says, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in our speaker. So we'll have some sound when we mess with our music. More wires. Yep, more wires. So, wireless, wired world. Okay, so. Bluetooth mode. My speaker does talk. Bluetooth is connected. Okay, so. Line in mode. There we go. Now we should be good to go to hear our sounds from from our Raspberry Pi that we're connected to wirelessly. Okay, so let's talk about what we see. All right, with this, and this comes to the part beyond what I've done personally, playing around with setting everything up. And hopefully we'll get everything to work okay you'll need some samples from the project there are lots of sound files in Raspbian remember the Raspbian operating system but it can be difficult to play them using Python however we can you can convert the sound files to a different file format if you want to first in the home directory create a directory called GPIO pin box I'll actually copy that uh, that may or may not work let's we'll see You'll use the new directory to store all the files on the project. Okay, so 
we're going to learn together. Oh, this even talks about creating files. That's great. I tried not to use the terminal mode. A lot of folks that are big into Linux will use terminal mode. I, of course, try to. Oh, there's our terminal mode. Don't want to use the terminal mode. I actually try to just use the normal file system. Okay, so in our home, it's where we are. So let's go ahead and let's make a folder. Where's the create a folder? And can I paste something? Can I paste? Nope, that's not gonna work. Okay, so it's called GP IO dash music dash box. Hit okay. Alright, now let's flip back. Guess I need to make sure. Yeah, okay. So I'm not going to minimize that again. I'm going to keep this in the background. Okay, so we did GPIO music box. Yay. All right, now we want to copy some sounds over. So use the same method as before to create a new directory called samples in your GPIO directory. Okay, so let's do that. Let's open our GPIO music. I'll double click. And we'll say new and we'll call it samples. Again, this is one of those things where I'm a big believer in going ahead and doing exactly what the tutorial or rest cake recipe says to do. <laughs> and then later on, we can come back and make changes to it if we need to. Okay. See if I can speed that up just a tad bit. There we go. All right, so there are lots of sample sounds stored in user share sonic samples. In the next, it will, in the next step, you will copy these sounds to the music box samples directory. Okay, I can handle that. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the usual way that I have grown accustomed to in Windows. Okay, so I'm not going to try to. I do know some of these commands make it very easy for like a tutorial to say, okay, we'll just type this and it'll work instead of trying to explain somebody, copy these files over there. But I also do know that uh, Linux is really big on making sure that. Uh, uppercase and lowercase and I've actually gotten involved in one where I couldn't get a project to work and come to find out because Windows doesn't work that way it was actually messing me up it's, Windows doesn't care about um, capitalization up, up or down alright so we're actually going to copy our files by hand over there let's talk about what it wants to do is copy all our samples over so we will do that by hand I mean we'll do that the file um, system way. So I think it said this one I have to use my memory and go back. So it's under user share sonic pi samples. User share sonic pi samples. Okay, so here's user. Let's see, share. Look for Sonic, Supersonic. There's Sonic Pi and samples. All right, there we go. Now, if I double click on this, it should play it with the VLC player. Okay, did you hear the sound? All right, we got some music. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm actually going to do it this way. I didn't want you to do that. I'm actually going to do it this way. I'll just do a copy paste. The whole folder here. Okay, I have to select all apparently. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go edit, select all, hit edit, copy. I like the drag and drop method, but the copy is more precise when you're doing something important. So if I go back up here, GPI music box, samples, 
click there and I hit edit and paste. And boom, there's all my samples. Ooh, that was creepy. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back. See what to do next. Check, we copied our samples over. Okay, when you have done that, you should be able to see all the FLAC. Now, what is FLAC? It's basically a different conversion. There's wave, which mostly doesn't have any conversion at all or compression at all. And then there's MP3, which has a lot, and there's FLC, which is supposed to make it one of the, the better sounding formats out there. So they're FLC, and I do know, unless you have certain things, the VLC will play MP3 files. So because that's already installed on this, and I actually know that old, older version, the Raspbian VLC was not installed, so trying to get it to, to play an MP3 was a, was a big um, it was a big deal. So I do need to convert everything oh, to WAV files. Okay, I guess that's for our player can't play FLAC files. Okay, to play sound files using Python, you need to convert them. Okay, and the terminal change the samples. Let's see, terminal type in the following command. Okay, so we may have to actually be doing a command here. Just convert the FLC files to WAV files. I don't have any other way to do that other than doing our code. Let's see. So this explains how that works, which we didn't have to do this. Let's see. Okay, I guess we have to for our example one negative part about having WAV files is that they can be very large compared to like MP3 or any of the other um, you know, compression MP4 or something. Okay, so we're gonna have to do this. So the best way to do this is I'll just have a split screen going on here. Uh, can I do there we go, that might work. All right, so yay. That's cool, we've got Windows on one side and we got Linux on the other. They're friends, kind of. Okay, so let's go ahead and we need to open a terminal. This is the terminal up here. And you may think, oh, well, this is like Word. I mean, excuse me, this is like DOS. It is not like DOS. <laughs> it tries to be, but then it gets very specific about stuff. Okay, so I need to make sure I'm in the right folder. So I'm going to have to type this in here. And wish me luck, and hopefully I'll, I won't type it in the wrong thing. Let's see. And since we learned, I cannot do copy paste. Let me make sure here. Nope, copy paste does not work. Okay, so we got to be on the right folder. That's what this is going to do. Okay, so forward slash GPIO dash music dash box forward slash samples all right no error message yet we'll get there eventually that I promise all right so now I got to type this in and hopefully if I type it in properly it'll start converting all our files from the FLC format to WAV which is what our Python can play, I guess. Okay, so for wait, am I typing? Oh. For F and what 
is this code? Some of this is just code for this one program that converts. I was doing this for a class I probably would already have the files converted so students wouldn't have to do, do this okay I did a minus I dollar sign F dollar sign and we need a Where's that on my keyboard? There it is. Open bracket, I believe that is. F point F L A C close bracket dot F A V quote. Hopefully, if I did this right, let me do a triple check here. Let's see, four F N A C T author. Let's see, I think I can copy that. Yeah, there you go. Four F S N C C. If this doesn't, oh, I could actually pull up the website, couldn't I? And then copy it that way. But anyway. Dollar sign. If this doesn't work, then there's more coding. I may do that actually. Dollar sign bracket F F L A C close close done R N F L C. Okay, well, let's hit enter. Try and see what happens. Oh, didn't like something I did. Okay, what did it not like? Did it like me typing R N? It says RM. Let's see if that's a. Yeah, RM's on the next line. Oh, you're going to be like that, huh? No. Just like you were, you goofy. There you go. All right, so it didn't like it. Didn't like RM. Okay, I think that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna pull up our actual project here on our Raspberry Pi so I can actually copy the code.
copy this. There we go. All right. So it does that for a few minutes. I'm sure some folks have no issues with uh, Linux, but it always seems like something I'm working on doesn't work fully properly. So, let's see. So now everything in our folder, instead of being Just FLC should be wave. So now we have two of everything, hopefully. Let's see. Did I do all of them? Let's see. What's our view? There we go. There we go. Okay. So that will like it started out okay let's look back at our code let's see no two extensions are required facing the same copy Like we should have some kind of music of the transferring stuff. Do 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 transferring stuff. Do 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 transferring stuff. Do 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 transferring stuff or converting stuff. So it should be converting, converting the files, converting them to WAV files, converting so our Python can play them. That was off. Off. Sorry. So our can play them. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> All right, so we did get some kind of problem before. So I'm pretty confident it's done it this time. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So everything now has its own sister wave file, I guess you'd say. <coughs> Okay, so let's go back to our project. Make that big again. So, I'll do our little checkbox. I like our little checkbox. Little checkbox. 
shows that we've done something. Do, 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 do. Okay, so next you'll start to write your Python code. You can use a text editor IDE to do this. Mu is always a good choice, so we'll use Mu. I haven't really used Mu much. I usually use the IDE for Python 3. So here we are talking about playing. Okay, so Pygame already does come with pre-installed, so there you go. That'll make it a lot simpler. So if you are trying to use this with Windows or something, things like the Mi, when you get it, it should be pre-installed too. Okay, so. Uh, first, import in Analyze the Pi module for playing sound. Import Pi game. So we're going to do that. And we're actually going to flip over and look at me. I think it's just me, isn't it? All right. So we're going to hit the Pi Res Pi button. Go to programming and click me. Now I actually t I actually turned on the scrap. Excuse me. I actually turned on the Python three. But we're going to use me. <laughs> me. All right. So I'm going to paste this and hit run. Yeah, that's fine. Scroll to the bottom. Let's see, how can I fix that? I think I can fix that so it's all on one screen for us. Yeah. There we go. That'll work a little bit better. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do our classic hello. Now, if you're not familiar with me, <laughs> one of the things it can do is while you're actually typing in your code, we're going to do the classic hello world, print. It actually will give you suggestions on the code to type. So we're actually going to be going to the second one here, print objects separated by the quote marks. And which should you use, the quote or the, the one check quote, which I'm not sure what the name of that is. Most of these it says it doesn't really matter with most of our code. Okay, I'm gonna do hello world. And then we do close parentheses and then we tell it to run. It's gonna make a save. Well, I have to hit stop on it. Hit save, run, here we go, it saved it. Hello world. All right, so we've got our, please put it back. So we did, oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> I got confused on that one. Okay, so first it says we need to import or initialize the Pi game module for playing sound. So let's go ahead and let's do what we were doing before, where we had it where it was two windows. I think that was a good idea, actually. We'll see how that goes. If it's if it squeezes everything too much, then I won't do that anymore. And because we actually have our Raspberry Pi here, I think I'm going to go ahead and close our window there. Hopefully I have it, that hasn't been blocking anything. And then when we, when we go back to our getting it to work, we'll actually do that. Okay, so got our me ready. 
And let's look at what sounds we have. First, we need to start with initializing the Pi game module, it says. So let's go to our code. Let's erase what this is and make it completely blank. How about I do new? I'll do new. Well, I guess that stays there because it's something I previously loaded. Okay, so let's type import Pi game. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so let's see. So let's go ahead and we don't have to save yet, but choose four sound files that you want to use in your project example. So let's see what those sound like. Tom Tom. Snare. No. Okay. And then cowbell. Now we've heard our sounds. We kind of know what to expect. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this. So to make it easier to find these files, I need to actually save them into the same folder. 
So if I click the pie, click there, do I have to be in samples too? Hmm. Okay, this says the main directory. Okay, so we're going to call it. Again, we're trying to just follow along. sounds we want that sounds great then create a Python object that links to one of these sound files give the file its own unique name for example okay Okay, I'm back. Let's see. Then create a Python object that links to one of these sound files. Give the file its own unique name. For example, drum. Okay, so we're given the variable. Well, I would have to go to PyMixer. That's interesting. Okay, so, and then we have to tell the exact name of the file. Let's call it, let's see, shoot, stop. So it does seem like I have to tell it, where do I tell the GP? Okay, so that's connecting our buttons. Okay, so, hmm, some simple. So these are the variables. So this is the variable that's connected. So that is what we're going to name it is drum. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll do that. And I don't think there is a Okay, um, let's see. So let's go down the next line. I'm going to do drum. Looks like we're getting close on time here in class, so we'll have to finish up this project next time. So join me tomorrow at 11 o'clock, and we'll jump into this project, and uh, we'll finish and we'll start wrapping it up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save.
All right, so let's talk about some of our classes we have coming up. So come join me for this afternoon. Come join me this afternoon at 2.30. We're going to be doing um, Excel uh, 2019 Basics. Okay, and tomorrow we'll finish up our project at 11 a.m. On, of course on our YouTube channel here. So come join me for that. Here's a list of our classes for the month and next week, or excuse me, on Thursday, like I said, tomorrow we'll finish up with our Raspberry Pi project here and we'll actually, uh, in the afternoon, we'll be doing our PowerPoint 2019 class, okay? Uh, at the end of the month, we'll be doing Photography Basics. Uh, photography Fundamentals and Cloud Backup will be on the 23rd. And Advanced Photo Editing. And like I said before, we've actually done this class a few times, but we're actually going to be adding layers to that class instead of doing our Virtual Scrapbook. Virtual Scrapbook is going to be its own class uh, by itself. Okay, And then we'll be doing Creating Videos and editing basics on the 30th, okay? So cord cutting is on the 30th, and gadget help with Alex will be on the 23rd at 11 a.m. Come join me for that, and chess on the 24th. Our libraries are open with, with uh, limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details. Or you can call the library for questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channels. And please give this video a like and all our other videos that we have posted to Storytime and stuff like that a like as well. And Makerspace stuff. Um, I do believe there's a new video coming out about how the 3D printer works. Um, do you realize that you can find our YouTube channel searching YouTube for GCHRL videos and you can also help us by subscribing to our YouTube channel if we hit a hundred subscribers then we can get our own YouTube address okay well thank you for coming I know we didn't finish the project but we'll get to finish it up tomorrow we did get all our files transferred over from FLAC files to WAV files and we did get our buttons all loaded up here, which will be waiting for us tomorrow. Click, 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 click. Okay. So have a great day. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye-bye.